Each egg bow needs at least 10 feedings to help it reach the next phase of development. With a 1 megabyte memory and 8-bit processor, the egg bows have several reactions. All the owner has to do is keep an eye on the egg bow's display panel, which lights up when illness or hunger strikes. When egg bow is hungry, you can push here. You can hear him eating. The hungry LED goes out. Egg bows also hiccup, sing, talk, and they're ticklish. Now let's tickle him. <laughs> but if you punish the egg bow by hitting it, it cries. <laughs> of course, when old enough, egg bows get married. It took the manufacturer, Top Developments Company, four years to develop the egg bows. They are only sold in pairs. One set costs about $37. The toys are already attracting a lot of attention. And you know, sitting around on store shelves all day can be tiring. Denise Dillon, CNN. <laughs> Why would you hit the egg bow? Yeah, That's you what don't I hit know. the egg bow. It's a nice egg bow. That's all the time we have this afternoon. Have a great evening. Dateline 29 News at 6 is up next. A circuit court judge in Stafford County throws out a multi-million dollar lawsuit in the UVA baby switch case. We'll have a live report. An international investigation of child pornography leads to Culpeper, Virginia. We'll have the details. And plans to keep taxing downtown, Char uh, downtown Stanton rather, will continue. The news starts now. This is Dateline 29 News at 6. Good evening, everyone. I'm Stacy Horst. And I'm Dave Cup. And our top story, a major legal defeat for a woman whose baby was switched at birth at the University of Virginia Medical Center. A Stafford County judge says Paula Johnson does not have a case against UVA. Amanda Hall is in our Charlottesville newsroom with our exclusive report. Amanda, what happened? Stacy, Judge James Haley Jr. threw out Johnson's $31 million lawsuit against UVA. Johnson had claimed negligence, fraud, and violation of civil rights in the 95 switch. The defendant list was almost 20 strong. Individual doctors and nurses, along with the hospital and UVA's Board of Visitors. Right off the bat, Judge Haley dismissed claims against UVA Hospital and the Board, saying they're not appropriate defendants. Also thrown out, claims that every defendant had committed constructive fraud and negligence against Johnson in that switch. The judge said there wasn't enough specific evidence for fraud. And besides, if hospital officials did make fraudulent statements, they were directed to the public, not the plaintiff, Paula Johnson. As for claims of emotional distress, the judge said only Callie and Rebecca, two girls switched at birth, could prove emotional distress, and they're not included in the lawsuit. Lawyers for the Commonwealth are still offering a $1 million settlement to Paula Johnson and the child she's raised, Kelly Conley. The two other families involved in the switch decided to settle with the Commonwealth more than a year ago. All right, Amanda Hall in our Charlottesville newsroom tonight. Thanks, Amanda. A man from Culpeper may spend the rest of his life in prison for distributing large amounts of child pornography over the Internet. A 36-year-old Jesse Charles Brent has been arrested and charged with 91 felony counts. The Jeff Kraus is live in Richmond where officials announced the arrest. And Jeff, I gather this arrest caps an international investigation. Is that right? That's absolutely right, Dave. It began last August when police officials in Germany found someone swapping child pornography pictures in an Internet chat room. Those transactions were traced to this man, Jesse Charles Brent from Culpeper. The investigation continued with the efforts of local and state officials. When they arrested Brent yesterday, they found over 4,000 kiddie porn images on his computer. The explosion of individuals that are abusing children and then going to the Internet to trade the images is something that is astounding. And when you when you see these images, you will understand that we're not merely talking about trading pictures. We're talking about uh, some of the most sexually abusive behavior toward children that can occur. Jesse Charles Brent was arrested and released on a $20,000 bond. If he's convicted on all charges, he could be ordered to serve 910 years in prison and fine more than a quarter million dollars. He's scheduled to be in court February 16th. 
Now, Jeff, how big of a distributor do officials believe Brent was? Well, for state officials, this is a huge arrest. This, of course, is the attorney general's strike force that deals with these electronic crimes, their first arrest. They say typical, typically when these arrests come up in federal court, you'll see a dozen images or a hundred images. He had over 4,000 images on his computer, so it just kind of tips the scales way out. All right, thank you. Jeff Krause reporting live in Richmond. And other Internet news. Some local Internet companies are expressing concerns about attacks on well-known websites. Earlier this week, major sites, including CNN and Yahoo, were forced to shut down after a hacker overloaded their sites with information. The FBI has launched an investigation into the shutdowns. Locally, the Charlottesville-based Cornerstone Networks experienced a similar attack in the past. We've had where people have tried to hammer our web server before, try to cause it to go down, but we saw it happening. Local companies we spoke with have the manpower and the technology in place in order to hold off such attacks. Virginia municipal elections are coming up in May, and a longtime member of Gordonsville's political scene is retiring as mayor. Dickie Blunt says he's leaving public life after 20 years of serving Orange County. He spent time as a supervisor and as Gordonsville town councilor before 12 years as mayor. Some of the proudest things that I'm of is our uh, we had our water system was 75 years old, and we've renovated the entire system. Plus, we built a new half a million gallon uh, storage tank. Uh, we've got a new library. We've got uh, a shopping center now. We've got a new town office with a new police station that we're very proud of. Now, Blunt's term ends on July 1st, but no one has formally declared as a candidate become, to become the new mayor of Gordonsville. That position and three town council seats are open in this May's election. The Virginia Republican primary is only about two weeks away. And even with the number of candidates diminishing, there won't be any changes made to the ballot. The time and cost involved in reprinting ballots and reprogramming election machines makes changes difficult. Local registrars will post information in each precinct on election day, telling voters which candidates are no longer in the race. It is still possible to vote for Steve Forbes or Gary Bauer, but those votes won't be counted or reported. Stanton City Council is standing by its five-year commitment to a downtown taxing district. Last night, council members heard words of praise for the special tax, which funnels money back into downtown development and promotion. The only complaint at a public hearing came from a Central Avenue merchant. Central Avenue has been uh, perhaps a distant cousin uh, on the far end, we're not in the, the um, shall we say, sexy area of town with the historic district. As a consequence, we have felt that we have been sort of um, paying a lot and getting very little in return. Stanton Downtown Development Association board members assured Young that Central Avenue is and always has been part of the long-range streetscape plan. The Jefferson Area Board for Aging has received a generous gift. A charitable trust doled out $450,000 to that organization. Java says the money will go toward home care and safety repairs for the underprivileged elderly, and Java hopes to make every dollar count. Our plan is not to spend it all in one year. We, we plan to use a portion of it, the earnings from it, uh, because we don't want to just spend it all at once and not have it available for future years because these needs continue. Although Jabba does receive federal funding, almost 40% of its annual budget comes from private contributions. And speaking of contributions, the University of Virginia School of Engineering has met its capital campaign goal of $50 million. UVA's engineering school reached that target a year ahead of schedule. That, despite the fact that the original goal had been boosted by $13 million. UVA officials say such corporations as IBM, MCI WorldCom, and Allied Signal sped the campaign. They goal. love to hire our students. Uh, you know, they know that we're on the cutting edge of many high technologies here. And, uh, so they support our programs uh, in, a, in a great deal because uh, they, they want to hire the students. Contributions to the School of Engineering were factored into the university's overall campaign, uh, capital campaign. UVA surpassed its $1 billion campaign goal in December. Local discount movie tickets are going to be harder to find after tonight. The Regal Cinema's Greenbrier Twin in Albemarle County is closing its doors for good. That's according to a report in the Daily Progress. The $2 a ticket 
movie theater was built in 1974 and shows second-run films. Representatives from Regal Cinema Incorporated say they are shutting down the theater because discount theaters are not as profitable as they were in the past. The theater will close tonight after the 940 showing of the movie The World is Not Enough. Well, temperatures in the 50s and 60s in February are something to celebrate. Ah, uh, but all good things must come to an end, and this one is apparently about to crash to a close. Robert's <laughs> in the Weather Center. Robert? Well, all week long we've been talking about our rain prediction for the weekend, and now it looks like we're going to have to change that over to a colder mix of rain and some snow on Saturday. Details coming up in just a minute. With Dodge Neon's 132-horse, 16-valve overhead cam engine, new, more responsive transmission, and available 15-inch wheels and tires, you can have a ton of fun. Get 0.9 financing for 60 months or a $1,000 cash allowance on Dodge Neon. As governor, he took on the education establishment and demanded high standards, phonics, and charter schools. He fought trial lawyers over lawsuit abuse and beat them. While Washington was deadlocked, he passed a patient's bill of rights. He challenged the status quo and reformed welfare, strengthened juvenile justice laws, and cut taxes $3 billion. Governor George W. Bush. A reformer with results, he will restore integrity and values to the White House. At Grand Home Furnishings, we've moved truckloads of furniture from our warehouse into our stores to bring you Grand's in-store warehouse sale. Now through Monday, you'll find prices at their lowest, some even below cost. We've taken huge markdowns up to 40, 50, even 70% on name brand display pieces, one-of-a-kinds, canceled orders, and more. So don't miss Grand Home Furnishings in-store warehouse sale. This weekend with special hours Friday from 8 to 8 and Saturday from 10 to 6. Right now, during the Ford President's Day sales event, get spectacular savings on every 2,000 Explorer. Now's the time to buy with low financing or big cash back. Incredibly low financing, like 0.9%, or huge savings, like $1,000 cash back. All around the President's Day sales event at your local Ford dealer is like nothing you've ever seen. So, how's the food here? Great, Mom. Pizza every day. That's what I was afraid of. Oh, it's not what you had in college, Mom. It's Papa John's. But you need variety. Variety? That's Papa's choice. You get five toppings for $9.99. What about your veggies? Their veggies are great, especially the fresh baby portobello mushrooms. Order Papa's Choice, a large pizza with your choice of five toppings for a meager $9.99. I'm living better than I ever did at home. I wouldn't say that. Tom Brokaw grew up in the land of hard work and long winters. It's the heartland in every sense of the word. And became one of the best journalists on television. I began life as a reporter. I still think of myself in that fashion. When I come on the air every night, I'm trying to be America's reporter and not just somebody who is a traffic cop introducing one story and coming out of another one. Maybe that's why more and more people are turning to NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw, America's news leader. Well, I'm a little discouraged about the long-range forecast because it's changed dramatically from what we were talking about a couple days ago. But today turned out exactly like we were predicting for you. You got some spring weather, so a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of cloud cover, and I hope you got out and enjoyed it. Look at this. It's still 57 degrees at the 6 o'clock hour. 40% humidity, a south wind. You know south winds around here always help boost our temperatures. 29.89 for the high temperature. Let's take a look at our almanac right now. It was 63 degrees today, 20 degrees warmer than it's normally uh, felt this time of year. 34 was our low this morning. That also is above normal. Look at these records. 72 back in 1932, 8 below zero in 1899. Records in the Charlottesville area, by the way, go back to the 1860s. So uh, we're quite fortunate to have well over 100 years of weather data for the Charlottesville area. 56 degrees in the valley, 33% humidity, south winds, and the barometer 290. 9.88. All right, we'll start off with a look at weather watchers. You can see those beautiful spring-like temperatures across the map from Louisa to Stanton up to Stanley and down to Glenmore. Everybody reporting mid to lower 60s and uh, a fine afternoon. A few more numbers show you 62 in Orange, Scottsville, 65 in Dillwyn, even 46 in the mountain of Wintergreen. But listen, if you're a ski buff or a snowboard uh, person, don't worry about the, this uh, little warm snap. 
all the ski resorts in this area, Massanutten, Wintergreen, out towards Snowshoe. It's the best it's been in years. Don't let the warm weather fool you. They got lots of snow. And as I said, 63 in Charlottesville. Just from my own personal interests there, you know. Anyway, let's take a look at the movie. Now, this is really a good movie because you can see a lot of stuff going on. First of all, a low-pressure system out in the Atlantic won't bother us, but it's quite uh, evident there. Second low-pressure system is here. You can see that wrapping up very clearly with a few scattered showers in here. And the third low, I guess, let me step off the map. You can see it even better there. Off the coast of California, look at that thing just spinning around in a counterclockwise direction. So these three systems are going to be the major players in the weather for the next couple of days. This first one will pass to the north of us and leave us in the mild uh, uh, air for the next 24 hours. So if we see any precipitation, it'll be in the form of rain with that warm air in place. But the cold air, folks, is coming in right behind it and as that cold air sneaks in it looks now like the cold air is actually going to get a little further south than we expected so with the arrival of the next storm system this one right here it looks like the precipitation when it moves into Virginia on Saturday is likely going to be some form of snow or a mixture of snow and uh, rain so I I'm sorry to have to break that news to you it looks like the weekend could be a little bit on the messy side this is the best guess now and it's all because the storm system is further south the next storm system is further south than we anticipated this was supposed to be up here in the Ohio Valley and it looks like it's going to go through the Carolinas drawing the cold air so it looks like we're we're in for a wintry mix on Saturday okay 40 degrees for tonight a few showers thick and clouds uh, no problems with the weather tonight you can handle a little bit of rain right 54 degrees for tomorrow but then markedly sharper colder temperatures uh, for tomorrow night as the cold front comes through it. See how many times I can say that. And the valley tomorrow, 50s, but then much colder tomorrow night with the arrival of that cold air coming down toward the state. Now, here's your five day forecast. Boy, talk about a roller coaster. And we've been on a roller coaster this week. Uh, you know, 50 degrees on Monday, 30 degrees on uh, Tuesday. You know, 50 on Wednesday, 60 on Thursday today, back down to 50, back down to 30. So mm. it's a, a nice, interesting winter pattern. But I would be prepared for a little bit of snow on Saturday. Measurable. Measurable. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. okay. Thanks, Robert. A Central Virginia girls volleyball team is working its way toward a state title. We'll take a look at the coach and the work behind the winning season when we come back. Nobody can sell you a new Chevrolet or Oldsmobile for less than Jim Price. Jim Price wants to start something with rebate, discount, and finance savings. Up to $5,000 plus a $500 GM owner loyalty rebate. And financing as low as 2.9%. Get brand new 2000 Chevy S10 pickups as low as $11,988. Jim Price says we'll be there with hundreds of Silverado and S10 pickups. Chevy Tahoe, Suburban, Astro and Venture Van. And now, Oldsmobile, Bravada, and Silhouette. That's Jim Price Chevrolet Old, Route 29 North next to Walmart, where the price is always right. There's lots of things along the road I'd truly love to see. I love to lean into the wind, tell myself I'm free. But your softest whispers louder than the highway calls to me. So close your eyes, I'll be here in the morning. Close your eyes, I'll be here for a while. What makes the manager special at McDonald's? Now, we make every sandwich hot, fresh, and just for you as you place your order. What is the manager special at McDonald's? The famous taste of McDonald's Quarter Pounder with cheese. Now get two for only two bucks. With a deal like that, you'll want to bring a friend. So go for the Quarter Pounder with cheese since you'll get two for just two bucks. Hot, fresh, just for you. The McDonald's manager special. A great value every day and only at one place. Did somebody say McDonald's? A new day is coming. A new way of buying your carpet and floors is on its way. But before it happens, it's New York Carpet World's end of an era sale. A never before offer up to 50% off carpet, 50% off pad, plus no money down, no payments, and no interest till 2001. You get it all up to 50% off carpet, 50% off pad, plus nothing to pay till 2001. It's New York Carpet World's end of an era sale. A new way is coming, but before it does, we must sell it all. Hurry. What color are your teeth? Introducing Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste. It'll safely whiten your teeth with just one tube. Prove it to yourself with our exclusive whitening guide in every package. You can go from here to here. Great tasting Arm & Hammer makes the difference. We guarantee it. So what color are your teeth? Arm & Hammer Advanced White Toothpaste. Whiter teeth, one tube, guaranteed. 
An Albemarle County coach has found success with another team from another county. Uh, he's helping a group of girls in Madison achieve their goal and take home a state title. Meredith Grabois introduces us to the man with the plan. Here we go. He makes us work really, really hard. That's it. Come on back. Stay off the net. Mark's kind of a glutton for punishment. Mark Raglan won't block, deny right it. Up. He spends most days and many nights teaching kids to serve, set, and strike. Fortunately, I have a very understanding wife and family who are also, also pretty much volleyball junkies. Raglan teaches at Albemarle Sutherland Middle School. Last fall, he led the Albemarle High School girls volleyball team to the state finals, his 12th season with the Patriots. Okay, Lauren, what was happening on that play? Then Raglan added another team to his Transition, coaching duties, the Madison stop. Mountaineers. Right play, stop, get low, play defense. Virginia's largest schools like Albemarle play girls volleyball in the fall. Its smaller schools like Madison compete in the winter, giving Raglan a unique opportunity to coach both squads. We had to get special permission because Mark's not employed in this school system. But uh, real fortunate to get someone of Mark's caliber Raglan has led Madison to a district title and an 18-3 and record, nine wins more than last year. I think the coach did have a lot to do with it. Um, we had to work hard. He makes us work really, really hard and expects a lot out of us. They have played so many sports together and been so successful that they know they can win. An attitude they'll need now that the playoffs have begun. That's it. Nice spot. Nice spot. Now hit it like you mean it. In Madison County, Meredith Grabois. Dateline 29 News. Ragland also coaches a Central Virginia Junior Olympic team. Madison will begin its title chase this Saturday at the Bull Run District Tournament in Manassas Park. And we'll all be keeping our fingers crossed yes, for them. Yes, we That's will. Just great. Virginia's Cavalier men were in action last night, and the Virginia women hit the court tonight. Next in sports, John Havey has a recap of one and a preview of the other. Customers come in, sometimes you see them just stand back and almost in awe at, at our selection of cameras. Walmart carries digital cameras as well as camcorders. <laughs> I occasionally go by Photo Joe. I love to use my camera for my kids. The kids' birthday parties, the baseball games, I capture those memories. That way you can really embarrass them later on. At Walmart, we carry only name brand cameras, only the good stuff. We've got cameras for, for kids that want their first camera all the way up to a, a pro photographer. All the latest models at, uh, at the everyday low prices. There are no bad photos. As long as you're having fun taking them, that's what it's all about. Now Virginia has two ways to save for college. In addition to the guaranteed prepaid tuition program, the new Education Savings Trust offers the same Virginia tax deduction. You can choose from seven different investment funds, save for tuition, books, room and board, for kids of any age, even in college or graduate school, anywhere in the country. Call us toll free or visit our website to find out more about Virginia's college savings plan. There's nothing else like it. It's happening again. Where's it centered? I got it. It's centered on Elwood Drive. Go, go, go! Back. All civilians back. 2.7. Yeah. 2.9. Oh, I'm feeling it. Go, move it, go, go, go! Yes! Oh! I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico! Yeah! Geico Direct. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Announcing the opening of Gilmore Ham and Snyder Sleep Shop and more, dedicated to making sure that you get a good night's rest. Especially if you choose a handmade Schiffman mattress, there's no better guarantee than Schiffman's handcrafted luxury. 100% cotton, hand tufted with an eight-way hand-tied box spring. Or choose the comfort of temperature smart Swedish foam in a custom comfort mattress by Wynn. Gilmore Ham and Snyder Sleep Shop and more, exquisite bedding choices for the rest of your life in Seminole Square behind Burger King. Paul Obal Ford in Stanton wants to give you some cash. That's right. Check out these deals. Like this 1999 Ford Taurus, $1,500 cash to customer. 2000 Ford ZX2, $1,500 cash to customer. And the 2000 Ford Windstar SE, $1,000 cash to customer. And check out the 2000 Chrysler Town & Country Van, $1,500 cash to customer. Paul Obal Ford is the place to shop for new and used cars with a reputation for superior products, sales, parts, and repair service. Paul Obal Ford, Greenville Avenue, Stanton. Time for sports now. We're joined by John Havey.
That's right. We've got Cavalier basketball. Yep. Uh, one game last night, one game tonight. Let's hope the one tonight goes better than yeah. the game last night. Now, if I told you that Pete Gillen's Cavalier men shot less than 30% from the field and just two players were in double-figure scoring, you'd probably figure, no matter who the opponent was, that UVA lost the game. Well, in the case of the Cavs' battle last night against Georgia Tech, you're right. Virginia made just 16 of their 58 shots from the field, including just two of 19 from three-point range. And the only guy that had a decent night shooting was freshman guard Roger Mason. Mason led all scorers in the ballgame with 18 points. Chris Williams, he didn't shoot well, but he still managed to put up 10 points and eight rebounds against the Jackets. But beyond that, it wasn't pretty for UVA. And in the meantime, Georgia Tech played what was probably their best game of the season, shooting 62% from the field. Clarence Moore and Alvin Jones combined for 29 points, 19 rebounds, eight block shots and five steals to lead the Jackets to a 68-47 triumph over the Wahoos. In dropping their third straight ACC game, the Cavs fell to 5-5 five and five in the conference, but this team can't dwell on their losing streak for long as NC State pays a visit to University Hall this Saturday night. Now, speaking of Virginia hoops, Debbie Ryan's Cavalier women hit the court tonight in a battle at home against Florida State. The Hoos are looking to rebound from Monday night's overtime loss at North Carolina, where the Heels came back from 10 points down to take a three-point victory. But the Seminoles, they could be just what the doctor ordered for UVA, as Florida State has never once in 19 previous attempts gotten a win against Virginia. But the Cavs still have to come to play. Four of their last eight matchups with the Knolls have been decided by 10 points or fewer including a win last month in Tallahassee by just three points. Tip-off this evening at University Hall is scheduled for 7.30 p.m. Now we'll have the highlights plus post-game reaction tonight at 11. Now earlier this week, baseball commissioner Bud Selig stated that Pete Rose would not be allowed to join his former Reds teammates this summer in a 25th anniversary celebration of Cincinnati's 1975 World Series triumph. Well, Cincinnati struck back at Selig today, unanimously approving a city council resolution inviting the entire 75 squad to a June 3rd celebration downtown rather than at the stadium. The resolution says it's unthinkable to honor the Big Red Machine without paying tribute to Rose and Cincinnati Mayor Charles Lucan stated that he's always wondered whether baseball would treat a New York Yankee the same way that Rose who played in one of the game's smaller markets been treated has been treated now and a deal we've been hearing about for month months I'm struggling here. Ken Griffey Jr. is finally returning home. The Seattle Mariners are reportedly trading Jr. to the Cincinnati Reds for pitcher Brett Tomko, outfielder Mike Cameron, and a pair of minor leaguers. And contrary to previous reports, which said this was a three-way deal involving the Anaheim Angels as well, only the Reds and Mariners are involved in the trade that sends the 10-time All-Star to the club his father played for. Now, terms of Griffey's contract with the Reds will be announced at a press conference starting about 15 minutes from now, but reportedly it's an eight-year deal worth 114 million dollars. Now to NFL news, where the leading passer in league history, Miami's Dan Marino, has voided the last two years of his contract with the Dolphins in what could be Marino's first step toward retirement. But we got to remember, the move saves Miami six million dollars under the salary cap, so Dan may still continue playing, and he may still continue playing for the Dolphins, and he says he's going to make his decision soon. It gives Dan a, a, a little time to think about what he wants to do. Uh, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. He ha he's had and will still continue to have a great uh, career. Um, I'm a little biased because I idolize the guy and I would love to catch passes from him. And, you know, I, I really want to see him to come back. Well, we'll see if he comes back. The Buccaneers are after him, but I can't imagine him playing for another Florida team besides the Dolphins. Yeah. It's Dan Marino. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, John. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being with us tonight. I've got another great bonus prize to give away. This is a live sweepstakes 2000 prize drawing. We're going to give away a $100 shopping spree at Colonial Mall in Stanton. This is a wonderful prize. You head over to Stanton and uh, spend 100 bucks at the mall there. That's, that's easy to do, right? Our winner is Lori Hull. Lori Hull in, looks like a, um, maybe a Greene County phone number there. Lori Hull is our winner today. You've got a $100 shopping spree at Colonial Mall in Stanton. Call within 29 minutes. And claim your prize. Time to get out of line and into an agile, well equipped, entertaining Dodge Stratus. It takes your drive in a whole different direction. Get 0.9 financing for 60 months or 1250 cash allowance on Dodge Stratus. 
In today's world, there's so much turmoil now. How do you get the information you need? Tom Brokaw and NBC Nightly News, America's news leader. Right now, during the Ford President's Day sales event, get spectacular savings on every 2,000 Explorer. Now's the time to buy with low financing or big cash back. Incredibly low financing, like 0.9%, or huge savings, like $1,000 cash back. All around the President's Day sales event at your local Ford dealer is like nothing you've ever seen. Tonight, why is the Frasier Valentine episode destined to be a classic? We'll give you a hint. This is my boyfriend, Niles. Part of one full hour of Frasier. Then, NBC Tonight. The episode of ER we told you about. With one devastating moment. That's sure to surprise you. Don't just hear about it. Oh, God. See it for yourself. The February turning point of ER NBC Tonight. Closed captioning for this Dateline 29 newscast is brought to you through a grant from Wolf and Farmer, attorneys concentrating in Social Security disability cases. Well, uh, again, we've got some messy weather coming at I us. I think so, but, but it looks like tomorrow's still going to be an okay day. There will be a few showers tomorrow, 50 degree weather or so, but Saturday, I think enough cold air looks like it'll get here to give us maybe another shot at snow. <laughs> and the accumulation you were saying to be in like the one to two inch. It will totally depend on the track of the storm, but right now, I, a couple of inches seem pretty reasonable based okay. on now. We'll know more tomorrow night. That's it for us for right now. Thanks for watching. See you later. Nuts and bolts, intense inspections, two more Alaska airliners grounded, the jack screw question. Love and money, the new fight in Congress over a fact of life for millions of married couples, higher taxes. In depth, tracking computer terror, can anyone really protect the World Wide Web? And sold, the multi million dollar battle over one of the largest creatures ever to roam the earth. NBC News World Headquarters in New York. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. Tonight, the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, is stepping up the requirements for aircraft inspection following the crash of Alaska Air 261. It is now mandatory after two more Alaska Air airliners were grounded today when problems with the jack screws were discovered. That's the suspect part in the Flight 261 crash. It's a key control for the stabilizer. We begin tonight with NBC's Robert Hager on the Alaska Air situation and that FAA directive. As inspections of more than 1,000 MD-80s and other closely related models begin around the country, mechanics today find damaged jack screws in the tail sections of two more Alaska Airlines planes, one in Seattle and one in Portland, Oregon. Both planes now grounded, and the federal government tonight makes the inspections mandatory from here on out, says they must be completed by the end of this weekend. The new finds are in addition to the damaged jack screw hauled up from the wreckage of the plane that crashed, with strands of metal hanging from it, metal that may have...